I wanted to start with adding a few more convenience functions that I have thought about and also realized I needed as I was working this out. The first one we want to do is modify the delete a little bit. For this guy, we want to support forward and reverse deletions. And my thought was we can just take the absolute value of the count, that's how many characters we're going to delete. And then the effective cursor, we're going to just first assign it to the cursor. And then if the count is less than uh, zero, right? So this is like we're, we're doing backspace. Then effective cursor is the max of zero, right? We don't want to go less than zero. And the effective cursor minus indel. And that should give us, I believe, we're now, we've now got a cursor that's scooted back. And then we're going to shift the gap to the effective cursor. Uh, we want to add indel right here. And so this, like I said, this gives us the ability to go a forward or reverse delete. Uh, we're still not protecting for Unicode, right? We're just doing basically byte-wise deletes. Insofar as you don't go to an actual like full-blown rendering where you can do UTF-8 rendering, it's supporting UTF-8 is kind of a slightly moot point. On, on this guy, what I was thinking we can do is we can just clean this up a little bit and do a clamp. So now we can just say it's that. We also want to have just a, a convenience function of length of, right, that's a procedure. And that's going to take the buffer, it's going to return an int. The gap is b dot gap in minus b dot gap start. And then we're going to return when b dot buff minus gap. That's that guy. The next thing I wanted to, oops, next thing I wanted to work on was a text buffer. And my thought is that if we just use the gap buffer directly, its abstractions are going to start leaking through. You're going to have a left string and a right string and this kind of stuff. And like, if we ever wanted to switch out, like, you know, for God knows why you want to use a terminal editor with a rope, we would have to, like, essentially we've polluted all of the rest of the code with the very specific bindings to a gap buffer. So the, the text buffer is just going to be kind of an abstraction layer that lets us insert different, uh, basically text data structure backends, if you will. And, you know, we don't have to care as the, on the user code. So we're going to get a new strings. I think we need format. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll get it deleted if we don't. And then we're going to need the gap buffer. Why not? So then the text buffer is a struct and it's going to use um, the gap buffer and that is a gap buffer dot gap buffer. And then we want to store, where's the cursor? I feel like, you know, should be terminal maybe. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the best spot for this, but we're going to put it here. So might come to regret that. Uh, dynamic and, and and this is this is going to be uh, start that right. Mm -hmm. So where where do e where does each line start at? Mm -hmm. And then if we want to be able to calculate those lines. It's a proc and it's going to take in a b of oops, text buffer and that's just internally updating itself. Calculate lines is going to be an O N procedure and we're going to hit this a lot. So if we were really going to use this for anything large, that we'd actually want to clean this up some, um, because this is a little bit of a toy, I'm just going to put some to do's in there. Like I might would use like an AVX search through the file to find the new lines or something like that. But again, we're, uh, I don't think this editor is going to do all that much. And so, you know, let's not go crazy here. So left, right is get strings of the B dot, the gap buffer itself. So now I've got the two strings and I can say for I zero, I of 
len of left, then, oh, important detail here. We want to um, always have the first line is going to start, oops, and b dot lines, and it's going to be a zero start of file, right? So there's always going to be the start of the file at zero. Just go ahead and stick that one there. And then we can essentially say if uh, left of i is a new line, then we're going to go ahead and do a new append right there. And the dot lines, it's i plus one, right? So we want to skip past that new line. And then, well, I don't know. We'll leave it just for now. So now we're going to go from the right. And the key here, though, is that it's really len of left plus that, because right's going to be zero indexed off the length of the string itself. But the right is, you know, the second half after the left string. So for this, we're going to put a to do. AVX scanning, maybe, right? And then to do, I guess I should make them both like that. Uh, to do only, only invalidate post cursor. So right now, what we're doing is we're just dumping everything and we're recalculating it all, but like, let's say we just edit the last line and we're a thousand lines, right? I'm going to dump that thousand lines and rescan it when I don't really need to. So we at least want to note that that's probably not the best choice. And there's another to do, I think, of uh, wrapping screen widths. So on the terminal, so we might would need to update this to pass in a screen width. And so if your characters go longer than that, it's going to try to wrap. That are you going to clip it? And I don't think that's a good idea. There's a couple of things that are going to make this a better procedure, but for now, you know, one, one step at a time. Uh, the next thing we probably want to do is figure out how long a given line is. And actually, let's just real quick, we'll, we'll get the length of, so I can say B is a text buffer and it returns an int and that's just return B dot Oops, uh, gap buffer dot length of the oops, this guy. So we, we just wrap that so that way we're always using a text buffer for it. And then we want to find out how long is any given line. So, like if I pass in a line index, I want to know how many characters in that line. You need the line length to be able to find the the file cursor. So, you know, we, we're mapping from screen space and back to file cursor. And as we walk the file to go find where is that, I've got to be able, be able to aggregate each line as I go. And so we'll do, uh, we're going to do an assert here. I guess I need to know wh which line I'm, I'm doing. So I say that the line is greater than or equal to zero and the line is less than the length of the buffer dot lines invalid line and we're gonna do like a percent v of the line right so we said we're we're off the array the we'll say if the line then the b dot lines minus one and and just for grins we could do greater than equals we want buff len is the length of b, and we're going to return buff len minus uh, b dot lines at b oops, len b dot lines minus one. How long is the whole how long is the whole buffer? And we subtract off the very last line, which is because remember, these are offsets at it's the offset starting at the last line. And in, in fact, now we can do an else, but starts at there. And we, we know we're not at the end of the buffer. So we can say 
next app is b dot lines of oops the line plus one return next stat minus start size. And that's the length of me is between the span between those two lines. The next function we're going to want is to do an insertion. So insert at, I think is kind of the same naming we were doing on, on the get buffer. And we'll say for a text buffer. Pass it the get buffer. Oh, we're going to know where to insert it. And then we're going to want to know what to insert. So cursor and string. We're going to advance the cursor. And that is run of us. And then we're going to invalidate and recalculate the lines. And again, this is where if we clean up the calculate lines at some point, that'll certainly help speed up the program. All right. Similarly, we want remove at. All right. This is going to be the same thing. In fact, we're just going to go snatch that. However, this one is going to be how many to remove. Similar to the other one, we want to be able to do, in fact, let's just do effective cursor. And if n is less than zero, we want to say effective cursor minus equals two. And why minus equals two? It seems like you would do minus one. And yet I found when I was testing it out, you really needed minus two don't have a good reason for that. So we're going to, on this one, we're going to actually smile and nod. So if someone has better explanation as to why that's two, I'd love to hear it in the comments. I, I, yeah, like I say, when I was testing it out, it, it definitely needed to be two, not one. And it bothers me that it didn't make sense why. It's probably something obvious, but, you know, clearly I... Don't know what that is. All right. So then, if similarly, if, if the count is less than zero, right? If it's negative, the cursor is going to be the maximum. We, we don't want to go below zero. And v dot cursor minus. Well, if this negative is going to be plus the count. If you're moving backwards, you need to alter the cursor. If you're going forwards, you're actually just moving the buffer. So that's correct. Then we're going to calculate the lines again. So again, that's, that's wasteful, but it is what it is for now. The next thing we probably are going to want is a text, uh, or basically what what's the rune sitting where the cursor is? This lets us see, like, are we sitting on a new line right here? Or is there some character? Like, what, what are we sitting on top of? And so we're going to clamp it. And and we want to clamp between 0 and its length of the buffer. Um, minus 1, because we're indexing it. Is the gap buffer dot get strings of b dot gb. So now I've got my strings. If cursor is less than the length of the left, then we know that's where it is. And so we can just say return room of the left at cursor. And we'll put another to do actual UTF-8 support. And then else if, no, I think it's actually just else. So if it's not this one, it's got to be the other one. Because we're clamped, and so we can't, we can't actually run off the ray here. Good. All right. So now we've got a room. Next one, we want to print to the screen. Again, we don't want our abstractions leaking through. And I've got a left buffer and a right buffer. And I just want to print to the screen, right? I don't want to have to know in the editor that there is actually two buffers or two, sorry, two, well, it's two halves. It's the same buffer, but it's like the left and the right. So what we want to do is we're going to do print or print range. And that's going to take in a buffer as a text buffer. And we'll say start cursor. 
Right, so where are we going to start at? And where do we want to end at? And then we also, I think we're going to do, we're just going to pass it the buffer. So we'll pass it the buffer to write into. It writes into it. And that seems like that makes sense. So everything's nothing to do like allocation deallocation inside here. We just say here's here's what it is. All right. So we're gonna get the left and the right strings. And then we're gonna say start cursor must be greater than or equal to zero. Oops. Invalid start. And similarly, so now we know we have a valid cursor. And what we'll want to do, I'm, I'm just going to cache the length of the left because I think we're going to use it a bunch. So we'll say when left, and then we'll say if the n, n cursor is less than left len, then we can take and do strings dot right string of the left, and we're going to take it from the start cursor to the end cursor. Then, right, and this one's going to be the start cursor is greater than or equal to left one. And this is going to be we're completely in the right string. So we can just take you. Now we know that we're in a straddling the gap, right? And that's so we'll say we're going to go actually we just take it, take it all, right? And then down here, we can go right, and we're going to take the end cursor. I grab the two strings, just cache off the left length. If the end is inside the left string, we're done. Just take from the start into the left string, wherever that is. Otherwise, if the start cursor is beyond the left string or at the end of it, then we take everything out of the right string. Otherwise, take from the start of the left till the end of the right. And so that should be our print range. And I think that gives us pretty much the tools we need for the main editor.